Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include Dutch seek to roll back the EU's power without treaty change Water policy, priority substances EU 2014 budget, good and bad news for David Cameron EU reaches political deal on seven-year budget Plus, Trevor Coleman writes, strutting I'm Rick Timmis and this is the unit Nightly News. First, from our homepage. In an effort to manage growing Euroscepticism in the Netherlands, the country's coalition government has produced a report highlighting how the EU is exceeding its powers. The Dutch coalition government has made an interesting bid to set limits on the activities of the European Union and to roll them back. The government published at the end of last week what it calls a subsidiary review, whose purpose is to identify areas where it thinks the EU is exceeding the powers given by its governing treaties. And many member states are starting to get cold feet when it comes to the EU, and the political line is talk of renegotiation and repatriation of powers. Is this really possible? Here at the unit, our team is already researching this for a new episode of Eurocon coming soon. So watch this space. Chemical pollution of watercourses and aquifers place an increasing pressure on the European Union's aquatic environment, putting the availability and quality of safe, clean water at risk. It is for this reason that the European Commission considers prevention of chemical pollution of water and sustainable water management a high priority. A source of clean water is a fundamental necessity of life and for this reason water pollution is one of the major environmental worries expressed by EU citizens. On 2nd of July, the European Parliament adopted this report, which was drafted by Richard Sieber. Full details of the directive can be found in our legislation section via the link below. In February, David Cameron managed to rally a group of like-minded countries to agree a historic cut to the EU's long-term budget. However, due to maddening complexities involved in EU politics, a cut isn't always a cut, just as an opt-out isn't always an opt-out. Which is why, while all eyes are in Westminster, we're on the scrap between Gordon Osborne and Ed Balls over the Comprehensive Spending Review, the European Commission's presentation today of its draft budget for 2014, the first under the New Deal, is politically significant. A political deal on the EU's hotly contested seven-year budget has been struck, European Commission President José Manuel Barroso has announced. The deal on 2014-2020 budget was reached between Member States and the European Parliament, leaders had said. The 960 billion budget cuts real spending for the first time. Speaking in Brussels and EU leaders gathered for a summit, Mr Barroso said the deal would speed up spending on youth unemployment. This letter from Trevor Coleman, called Strutting, and begins I write this in the lingering light of the longest day, a bittersweet 24-hour mix of optimism and sentimentality coupled with a realisation that things can only get increasingly darker, an omen perhaps, I think so. The summer of 2013 will be a prelude to the serious business of getting through the wintry economic times that lie ahead for the Eurozone and us. Here's a brief look at the more menacing monetary man-traps that are upcoming. Italy, one of the big hitters of the European Union, now teeters close to a bailout. The reported debt figures are frightening. Medio Banca, Italy's second biggest bank, warns that the country could inevitably end up in an EU bailout and that some 160 large companies are in special crisis administration. This was the country you so may recall which had imposed upon it the EU puppet government of Mario Monti, an undemocratic arrangement sensitively referred to as a technocratic government and meant to ensure that the EU austerity package was adhered to. 
The Italians were having none of it, however. Whatever their faults, they can recognise a foreign takeover when they see one. Monty now heads an irrelevant rump of politicians, while the austerity package has been all but ditched by the other groupings in the Italian governments as they line up prior to yet another general election. The EU holds its breath. But help is at hand. Mario Draghi, another Italian and the unelected president of the European Central Bank, has said he will do whatever it takes to protect the Eurozone from collapse. He added that we think the Euro is irreversible. It's amazing what being in charge of other people's money does for you. I wonder what the 20 million unemployed in the EU think of that. The International Monetary Fund at last has admitted that the recent Brussels bailing out of Greece had in reality been nothing of the sort. Greece had been sacrificed, they said, to save the euro. In other words, the Greek people pick up the Brussels bill. <laughs> no surprise there, then. More disquiet, this time in the German court, where 37,000 citizens plus some academics are arguing that constitutionally the ECB should not be financing bankrupt states. Italy and Spain are bankrupt, no doubt. Featuring heavily in their thoughts as too big to fail, a more apt description might be too big to bail. More EU baited breath as it awaits the court's decision. But Greek bankruptcies, Spanish unemployment, Italian chaos and Cypriot bank raids are of little consequence to the EU luminaries as long as they can strut their stuff on the international stage. Sure enough, there in the G8 lineup at La Urm with the leaders of the world were Barroso and Van Rompuy dutifully standing in a line on a log waving at the camera with their ties off. Who were they waving to? <laughs> Certainly not the voters. No one has ever voted for either of them. Enjoy the summer. It's going to be a long winter. Today in our video library, Landscapes of Emergency. This short subtitled documentary returns us to the plight of the Greek people and looks at the totalitarian regime that has been implemented as a result of the EU Troika austerity programs. Now the city of Athens is populated with thousands of empty houses abandoned by those who cannot afford the rents or mortgages on them. Exasperating the problem, there are no buyers for these empty properties, which have now become squats. These tales are not isolated to Greece. The same is true for whole housing estates in Ireland, homes abandoned by their owners and left unfinished by developers. Why? Because the EU project states the national debt must not rise above a certain percentage of GDP and for Greece to remain in the Eurozone, it must abide by these rules. But any talk of leaving it is met with swift action by the EU technocrats. Is this really the work of the EU freedom and democracy? I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon. You can get lots more news stories and information on our website, theunit.com. You can get in touch with us there, and we particularly welcome your letters and points of view. You can follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter username is the e Unit. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of our regular updates. You can join me and the rest of the team for interactive discussion and debate on Google Plus at any time. Are you looking for a public speaker for your event? Our public speakers are happy to come and discuss Britain's relationship with the EU in your area at no cost. If you would like to add interest and value to your group event, then get in touch with us via the words section of our website. Join us in our live question time style online show, The Unit Interactive. Broadcast live on our website, theunit.com, and globally via thehangoutshow.com. Join our community on Google+, and you can be part of the wider public voice, united in freedom, liberty, and independence. Simply join our community, the unit on Google+, links to the community page are below. <laughs>